This is Borolo. For 200 years it's been called City of Perth. And here on Australia Day, stories of First Nations people are drowned out by the sound of fireworks. But things are changing. And these Buddhia elders are leading that change. There is a story for Borlu that every person needs to know, whether they're black or white or whatever. It was a crime to be a black fella when I grew up. Exclusion zones was in Perth and also just about all over WA. And that's when we weren't allowed out in the streets after six. We used to go looking for our old pop and we'd bring him out of town before six o'clock so he wouldn't be put in jail. Later on I was thinking, well, Maybe they were concerned for the welfare of the Aboriginal people and they didn't want them to get the white man's germs because he brought it in from overseas. But it was all racism and discrimination and oppression. When the British first come here, Noongars were at a disadvantage from the get-go. We had spears and they had guns. And there's been conflict ever since. These elders spent their lives fighting for truth and recognition of their sovereignty. We are still waiting 200 years to share Spot the handshake yeah. of friendship. And in 2016, tensions between the city of Perth and Noongar mob escalated again. Aboriginal protesters had been camping at Harrison Island for more than 10 days, angry about the state government's plans to shut down some remote communities. Patagara is a Noongar name for that place. And the police came down with horses, rangers came with trucks. Leave us in peace! They were all lined up on one side and we were around the sacred fire. As a medicine man, mother and man, we all sang out, Where are you, Warren? What are you, are you? Go, go, go! The backlash from this horrible event created a huge media storm. For the city of Perth, that catalyst of change really was Madagara. It was those strained relationships. I think it was just that tipping point where it's like, there has to be a different way of doing this. We can't continue to have this type of connection with each other. The first thing that we had to do was apologise. So the city of Perth reached out to the elders. It was a long time coming because of the history of the Perth City Council. They were now looking to reconcile and to put it back in line. And it's not an easy task. We've been pushed from pillar to post on our land by the government of Western Australia. We're still in pain, we're still in hurt for the loss of our land. The first step was getting an elders group into the city of Perth. I can clearly remember the first couple of meetings that I had with the elders. We were sitting on opposite sides of the table and there was a sense of wanting to trust but not sure whether they could trust me. If you're going to do something, it needs to be a partnership. If you say in partnership, they've got to do so much and you've got to do so much. What it is about is recognition and acknowledgement that Aboriginal and Noongar people have been here since time began. Yeah. Full stop. The first couple of meetings, I remember walking away and, and they were very emotional. You could hear what people had experienced in the room. And that went back, not just about Madagarab, but years, years and years, of the whole colonisation, everything, because this is where it all started. Around about the age of eight, I was taken away. And we were put on trucks and taken to Wandering Mission. Every detail of our lives was recorded. My father had to get permission for him to marry my mother. I always remember the citizenship's rights and you weren't even allowed to have your own family around. I wanted to join the Navy, but they asked me if I had my citizenship. I said, I don't need a citizenship. I said, you need one. We thought, oh yeah, we can build a rap in six months. No, you can't. When you have that level of trauma and history, it took us 18 months, but that was what was needed to build mutual respect, 
trust and build the start of a relationship. For people to express themselves and be able to get that out of their system, that's part of healing. And listening to that and then realising how passionate they were about making sure younger generations get to know that they went in battered for them. We've already had a great idea from Annie Leisha about calling it Danju. Together they created Danju, a document that committed to giving Aboriginal people a real voice in decision making. The first dot point to acknowledge the past historical injustices. I want the word historical taken out and commit to make changes to build a better future for all. The connection to the city for all, black, white and wherever you come from, and especially Aboriginal people from this country. Ensuring a real voice is given to Aboriginal people that live, work and have a connection to this land and a relationship with the city of Perth. Yes. Yes. Do you understand the importance of this? We would not be here if we didn't think we was going to get to this. Because we don't want to waste our time. We've done this for years and years and years, eh? And guess what we've done? We changed we've it. We've changed things. We'll be thing. dead, long gone, but it'll be still there for our young At the same time that these elders were meeting with the council, Black Lives Matter rallies were marching through the streets of Perth. When I saw that big crowd of non-Aboriginal people, African-American, multicultural, children of all walks of life, that there is hope. There have been people uh, like my dad and Aunty Mingley who have been pushing for change since they were my age. You know, that was 50 years ago. I don't want to be having to be 80 years old and pushing for this kind of change for my children and my children's children. A couple of elders rang me just now and said, thank the council for the wonderful work they've done for the protest we had down here on Saturday. There was just a sea of people, all walks of life. Tears come to my eyes when I stepped down. That was really something. The city of Perth has really come ahead, you know, because I've been involved with them now for about, well, I think it's four years, before Aboriginal people never even got a foot in the foyer of the city of Perth. But now they can't wait until we go in there and, you know, work together with them. We're going to go through streets and name streets and you know names. And when I'm coming into Perth, I want to see that you're now entering into Wajak country. We didn't have a say in all those things that were happening way back then on how they were developing Perth. So I think it's a good initiative to make those changes. Well done, all you elders. Well done, elders. Well done. Now, how long yep. did that take? That's it. How long? Only 250 years. Yeah. <laughs> We've been fighting for recognition and uh, identity, and it's only now that uh, these goals are being achieved. Danju, Nijaburu Nyini, Wajakuja. Boliburia, Ngalaknaga, Yay, Kanagul Yardi. Kaya. I think this is the first step, it's not the end. Going back to where we came from, my first experience was Harrison Island, and it's ingrained in my heart. What I saw and I experienced there, and I think it's been something very close to my heart to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Emma, do you? Uh, thank you on behalf of all of us, all the Elders, for the hard work and uh, persistence that you put into this. We know the change is not easy. Uh, we realise that we've been through this for a long time. The Perth City Council have had, had some really good people here. I know that, just that it wasn't in the right places. And we just hope that it continues, that um, good people actually stay here and take this forward. I mean, there's a lot more work to do. And I'm sure they have good people here, we can do that. And you too, Murray. working with the city and seeing the major steps that were being taken just makes you feel so good and your heart starts to sing. When the Australia Day Skyworks was cancelled in 2021, it was replaced with a truth-telling event led by the elders. Ever since colonisation, we have suffered injustice in this land of Australia, black people, 
My family, my ancestors, they were survivors. As Aboriginal people, what we need to remember is we're now recognised as the longest, continuous, unbroken culture of any race of people on Earth. I learned a lot about our heritage and our culture, but also about the beliefs of Aboriginal Australians. They also told us about stolen generation. That shouldn't have happened. If I was taken away from my mum, I would feel sad. As hard as the truth is, you know, it's what happened and what they had to face. It's important to tell these stories because it's part of our shared heritage. It's important to acknowledge them and uh, part of the uh, reconciliation process. So it's a healing. So elders, their grandchildren, it's all part of healing. We really need to know about their story because they are the true owners of the land. They are survivors of today and I think we, we need to honour that. You know, they are our warriors. It's a proud moment tonight because to see what we saw tonight, we come a long way and we are looking forward and we're walking together. I say goodbye and I leave the story with you is the truth, nothing else but the truth. <laughs>